So now we've learned four types of reactions that can occur for alkyl halides. The SN1 and SN2 substitution reactions, and the E1 and E2 elimination reactions. How do we know which reaction and mechanism will operate under a given set of circumstances? The first and most important thing to consider is the substrate, the molecule with the leaving group. The structure of the substrate can help you rule out particular mechanisms. Tertiary leaving groups, for instance, do not undergo SN2 reactions, and primary leaving groups can't just leave on their own to make primary carbocations, so those substrates will never undergo SN1 or E1 reactions. And E2 reactions depend on the presence of an adjacent hydrogen with an anti-periplanar orientation relative to the leaving group. If that's not possible, E2 elimination can't occur. Next, consider the nature of the electron donor, the nucleophile or base. If it's strong, that lends itself toward SN2 or E2. If it's weak, that indicates that SN1 or E1 are more likely. Some specific nucleophiles and bases are pretty good at performing a single type of reaction, and they're usually giveaways of their function. Strong nucleophiles that are poor bases include iodide, bromide, thiolates, cyanide, and azide. These favor SN2 reactions. Strong bulky bases that are poor nucleophiles include t-butoxide, the diisopropyl amide ion, a reagent that we'll see more in a few weeks, and dBu. These favor E2 reactions. The first two factors, substrate and electron donor structure, are usually enough to help us determine the likely mechanism of a reaction. They're the most important factors. But two additional factors are occasionally important if the situation is ambiguous after considering the first two. Solvent and temperature. While all these reactions do best in polar solvents, SN2 reactions are favored in aprotic solvents, while the other reactions tend to prefer protic solvents. And higher temperatures tend to favor elimination over substitution, because the equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S tells us that higher temperatures make entropy a more important player and elimination reactions are generally more favorable than substitution reactions from an entropy standpoint. Despite all these considerations, it's very common to have different mechanisms occurring in the same reaction flask. These reactions are frequently in competition, and even with the most carefully chosen reaction conditions, we often see mixtures of products. This is why we need separation and purification techniques, like chromatography and recrystallization, which you'll be learning about in lab in the upcoming weeks.